Okay, so this is my second video on my 2022 Volvo XC90. And this is the plug-in hybrid. Uh, the recharge is what they call it. And this is the extended battery version. So this is the first year when they offered the extended version of this. Last year's version did about had about 18 miles of range. Uh, this one, I just charged it. If you can see the dash there, it says 36 miles. And I drove a little bit to get here. So that was actually at 38 uh, when, I, <clears throat> when I left and that was fully charged. Um, one of the uh, one of the disappointing things for me about this vehicle, the way they calculate your your range, is you can see right below the 36, it says 460 miles of range. Um, that isn't accurate. What that's doing is taking the gas tank capacity, which is 13.2 gallons. I know on the internet it says all over the place that it's 18 gallons, but it's not. It's 13.2, and uh, it's taking that, and it's taking that times the 42.7 miles per gallon that you see on the right. And that that 42.7 is a combination of the electric gas mileage and the, uh, the electric equivalent for gas mileage and the gasoline motor gas mileage. So because I've been using a lot more uh, electric battery than a gasoline motor, that number is much higher than usual. If I was using the gasoline motor, the, the, the miles per gallon average would be more like 25. And so that number is skewed because I'm using the battery a lot lately. So it's up to 42.7. So it's taking that times the 13.2 uh, capacity or in this case, what's left in the tank, I'm slightly below full, so it's probably around 12 or between 11 and 12 gallons. And it's giving me this range of 460 miles, which is incorrect. Um, the range on this in reality is more like with a full tank of gas, your gasoline engine would be good for about 375 miles. And that's figuring 25 miles per gallon. And then you, on top of that, would have about 37 or 38 miles of range out of the electric battery uh, under ideal conditions. And that's going to give you a, com a total range of just a little over 400 miles, maybe 415 or 417 miles. And um, that is well off from what it's saying right now. So a uh, little disappointed that that number is not accurate, um, but that's how they're calculating it. So the other thing I wanted to show you is the different drive modes that this has and talk about the hybrid system. So <clears throat> if you scroll to the left and hit drive modes, here are the drive modes that you have available. Uh, it defaults to hybrid when you start the vehicle and power mode, I don't know if you heard, the engine just kicked on. Power mode uses a combination of the electric battery and the gasoline, and that calls up all the power that's available in this, which actually is fairly substantial because the gasoline motor is good for 312 horsepower. It's a two liter turbocharged and supercharged four cylinder. And the electric motor is 145 horsepower, according to the manual. So you have a total of 457 horsepower, um, which is, you know, pretty substantial, especially for an SUV. Now, the vehicle is heavy. It weighs 5,068 pounds. Um, so it is not a light vehicle. That is just under 400 pounds shy of what an F-150 crew cab weighs, a four-wheel drive F-150 crew cab. Those weigh a little over 5,400 pounds. So this thing is, is not light. Um, despite that, it's in power mode, it's actually very fast. Um, then you have an off-road mode for uh, rough roads, they call it. And there's a pure mode which is not available right now to me. Um, the conditions have to be ideal for pure mode. Um, 
and that uses strictly electric battery. The other one is constant all-wheel drive, and the reason that they have constant all-wheel drive is because in normal conditions, when you don't have wheel slippage, the rear wheels are being driven by the electric motor. So when you're in hybrid mode and you're using battery only, this is basically a rear drive vehicle. When you have wheel slip, that's when it kicks on, uh, kicks into all wheel drive and will engage the front axle and actually give you all wheel drive. But until then, you're actually a rear drive vehicle. Now, if you're running in the gasoline motor, strictly in the gasoline engine, like once you run out of battery um, range, that is actually in front wheel drive mode. That is only turning the front wheels. So when you use the constant all wheel drive mode here, that is actually engaging both axles so that you have the best possible traction. And that's forcing that system to engage both axles. So interesting setup the way they have that. And this actually, the way it's set up is very similar to an F-150 or a, or a Ram uh, or a Chevy Silverado, the full size trucks have automatic four wheel drive as an option. So you're normally in two wheel drive, which is rear drive in a pickup truck. And then when you select the automatic four wheel drive, that basically is doing the same thing this is doing. It's engaging that front axle when you have wheel spin, but only when you have wheel spin. So interesting setup they have there and just something to, to be aware of. Um, this is not an all-wheel drive in the sense that a lot of all-wheel drives are in that it's not turning both axles all the time. And I think the reason for this is fuel savings. It, it does take more power to drive both axles. And so you're, you're going to lessen your range um, for both the gasoline tank and for the battery. So uh, I'd want to wrap up the video. I don't want to make this too long. I'll make another one about some other details of the vehicle, but if you have questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.